1916, Gilbert Lewis, a professor of chemistry at the University of California, Berkeley, wrote an article in which he challenged all contemporary thinking by suggesting that chemical bonds consist of two electrons in a shared space between two atoms. Then, in the first simple example of what would later become known as Lewis dot diagrams, he suggested dots or colons could be used to represent electrons or bonds. It is noteworthy that Lewis's idea contrasted to that of Bohr, who, in the third of his famous 1913 trilogy of papers, had suggested bonds are composed of orbiting electrons. Robert Millikan, author of another famous 1913 publication, arising from his oil drop experiment, showed support for Bohr's ideas in a meeting of the American Chemical Society in December 1916. This prompted Lewis, who was also at the meeting, to address again the issue of whether electrons in atoms are in rapid motion or essentially at rest, a point which he noted was of fundamental importance. He concluded his article by admitting that the forces that would contain electrons in such definite positions were not understood at the time, but noted that his hypothesis was essential to explain the chemistry of the elements. Two years later, Irving Langmuir from the General Electric Company, an expert in the dissociation of gases at surfaces, who like Lewis had previously studied with Walter Nernst, began to write a series of publications in an attempt to popularize and address limitations of Lewis's theory. Langmuir began the series, in which he coined the term covalent to describe the shared electron bond, by noting that the theory offered an extraordinarily satisfactory explanation of chemical properties. In July 1923, Lewis travelled to Cambridge to give the introductory address at a meeting of the Faraday Society on the electronic theory of valence. It was here that he claimed that the cardinal phenomenon of all chemistry is the formation of an electron pair. Although seven years had passed since Lewis's first publication on the topic, it is notable that there were a number of participants who still held on to the concept of orbiting electrons, one of whom was Neville Sidgwick. Sidgwick, a theoretical chemist who would later make important contributions to geometrical bonding models, noted that two orbiting electrons, one on each side of the nuclei, may be fundamentally necessary to explain bonds between atoms. Still in 1923, Lewis provided an update of his ideas in a monograph, which he began in typical creative fashion by noting that his ideas remained far from being proven. Later on in the monograph, Lewis gave the first clear example of how electron pairs can play important roles in certain reactions. At the same time, Lewis noted the acidity and basicity of the substrates, which were later termed as Lewis acids and Lewis bases. The following decade, Neville Sidgwick published a book based on a series of lectures given at Cornell University. He noted that it had taken approximately 15 years to obtain a sound theoretical basis for Lewis's ideas. One of the theoretical chemists who helped provide that theoretical foundation was Linus Pauling who, in his earlier years at the California Institute of Technology, had been a target for Lewis in his effort to attract talented scientists to Berkeley. Half a century later, Powling would credit Lewis with revolutionizing chemistry with his ideas. In contrast to Powling, Lewis would never win the Nobel Prize. Despite this, however, he remains well known as an important, if somewhat controversial, figure in the history of chemistry. It is notable that when Patrick Coffey chose to write a book on influential characters in early 20th century chemistry, it was Lewis who took pride of place on the cover. Thanks to the archived sources shown here, and to you for watching to the very end. Hope to see you again, sometime soon.